Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to create a game that can be controlled with your face. So I have recorded a little animoji here that raises his eyebrow and lowers his eyebrow and by doing so we can control a game and this game mechanic was already implemented in an amazing game called Rainbrow and it really just works like that. You're raising your eyebrow and a little emoji is moving up and down. It plays nice sounds. You have these great animations um, of the obstacles. You're actually catching these stars and by that getting points. And this game was developed by Nathan Jitter and it was even featured in a Dub Dub Beach C presentation this year about creating great augmented reality experiences. So a shout out goes to Nathan for creating this amazing game and you can also find a link to the iTunes store and to Rainbrow in the video description below. It is really really cool. And the game that we're going to create is really reduced to the basics and to the basic game control of lowering and raising the eyebrow to actually control our emoji. So this is going to be really cool and to get started I have created a star project for you that you can download in the video description below and here for example I've just created this simple game scene with some of these areas, these colorful areas with our little emoji here and a game scene um, that has some basic methods that we're going to explore later, also a player class and our game view controller and we're going to implement the important stuff that is um, related to augmented reality and AR kit in a second, but let's get started right now with our game scene. And if we have a look at our player sprite here, then you can see that I have already given this player sprite its name player, and also it has a custom class of player. And if we have a look at this custom player class, all that is in there at the moment is a numeration that indicates what kind of states we have. So we have a neutral state for a neutral face expression and we have an up state for a smile and a down state for the opposite, a very sad emoji. And of course in the assets folder we also have these different emojis in their different resolutions and now we can actually just jump right into the game scene that also has some code already available for you just that we save some time here so we have our player node as a private property here in the game scene we have a moving flag a bool that indicates if we are currently moving our player we are going to deal with that later and we also have a generator for ui impact feedback so this is going to help us to get nice feedback from the taptic engine starting from iphone 7 and up of course we can only use our app on iphone 10 because we are using the true depth camera in uh, the front facing camera and this means that we can indeed use the ui impact feedback generator to get this nice haptic feedback and indeed did move to view function we're actually loading our player node from our game scene.sks file into our code and we can then work with the player node and then we also prepare our UI impact feedback generator to use that later on. And I've also added two functions here, a update player function and a move player function that gets a state or both get a state as a parameter so that we know what we can work with if we're currently working with the up state, the down state or the neutral state. And in the update player function, what I'd like to do is to check if we're currently not moving. Because if we're not moving, that means that we can move our player up or down. And we're doing this with the move player function. So I'm simply calling here move player and passing along the state right here. 
And then we can really focus on the most important function in this class, which is the move player function. And here we first have to check if we have a player available. So we're using the flat statement here to create a player object. And then we're simply assigning our player node. And if this works, then we can definitely go on and we can change the texture of our player depending on the current state that we get as a parameter here. So we access our player, access its texture, which is an SK texture object. So we're also initializing that with an SK texture object. And here, what I'd like to do is to use an image named. And here we can simply use the state and its raw value because the raw value is the corresponding file name or the corresponding image name that I've also used in the asset. So down neutral and up. And with that, we're assigning the correct facial expression to our player. And now we can simply deal with the direction that we want to use. So if we're raising our eyebrows, brows, <laughs> we want to move our player up. And if we're lowering them, we want to move it down. And if we, if we do nothing, then we do not want our player to move at all. So I'm creating a direction pro uh, variable here that is of type CG float and I'm assigning zero to begin with. And then I'm using a switch statement to switch through the different states that are available. And in the case of the state up, what I'd like to do is set the direction to positive 116. This value is or has something to do with the positioning of my different layers here or with these uh, different colored areas. And I've just used this value because if I'm moving my player 116 pixels up, then I reach the center of this orange um, area. And if I move it 116 pixels down, I reach the center of the gray area. You could do that differently. But since we want to focus on the um, aspect of reading our facial expressions, this is just going to do it for now. And in the case that we're moving down or in the state down, we change the direction to negative 116. And in the case of neutral, neutral, we're using the direction of zero. And with that, our switch statement is also exhaustive and we shouldn't get any error messages anymore. And now that I have this direction, what I still want to make sure is that my player can't leave the screen and therefore I've prepared a little if statement right here that just checks if we're within our boundaries of negative 232 or positive 232. And if we know that we're going to move um, within the boundaries that we have defined, then what we can do is setting our moving flag to true because now we're starting to move and therefore I'm going to define a move action which is going to be an SK action and we want to move our player by a certain amount of pixels. So I do not want to move my player in X direction, so zero for that, but I want to move it in Y direction with the amount that we have defined in our direction variable. And I want this to take point three seconds. So this is the move action that we perform. And what I'd also like to do is create a move ended action, which we're going to use to set our moving flag to false and also perform our haptic feedback. So therefore I'm going to use an SK action again, and then simply a run block. And here I have to use self since I'm in a closure, access my moving flag and set this to false. And I actually just want to perform my haptic feedback if we're moving upward or downward, not if we're actually not moving at all. So I'm checking if my direction is not equal to zero, then I also want to use my generator and call the impact occurred function, which triggers the haptic feedback. And these are the two actions that define what we do when we have red a facial expression up or down. And in that case, we also need to define an action sequence because those two actions should always happen one by one and one after another in a sequence. So let's define a move sequence using SK action 
and the sequence function. And here I simply pass along an array of the move action and the move ended action. And then I can use my player, call the run function, and pass along my move sequence. And that is what we are going to do when we have read a facial expression corresponding to the states that we're interested in. Now, you might be asking what or how do we get these states? Because we have now defined what we want to do when we have read a certain facial expression, but how are we going to read these facial expressions using the True Depth camera? And therefore, we are going to switch to the Game View controller. Since we're going to use AR Kit for that, it is important that we adopt the AR Session Delegate. We also need a session that we can work with, an AR session. And the rest is pretty standard code for a Sprite Kit game. So we're just loading our game scene, setting scale mode. We present the scene using our SK view. We are showing some debug information like the FPS count, the node count. But now the important stuff in view to load is that we initialize an AR session and that we also assign self as the sessions delegate. And this gives us the opportunity to actually access the very important AR session delegate functions that we're going to deal with right now. And for us, important is the did update anchors function because every time we find anchors, in that case, we are looking for facial anchors or face anchors, we can do something with them. But to get these face anchors, it is very important to configure the session correctly. And we're going to do that in view will appear because this is the place to actually define how AR or AR kit should work in our application. And I'm going to use a guard statement here to check if AR face tracking configuration is supported. So I'm using AR face tracking configuration, use the is supported property here. And if this is true, then we're good to go. But if not, then we're not dealing with an iPhone 10 here. And this means that we cannot run our application and we could print something like um, iPhone 10 required. And this would also be the place to trigger some UI changes. This, this would be a real game to display your user that he or she cannot use um, this app in the full range of its capabilities because we do not have a true depth camera here to work with. And what I'd also like to do in my case now is just return so that we do not continue doing anything right here and AR face tracking configuration is supported for us, I can start creating a configuration object using AR face tracking configuration right here. And this is going to be the configuration that we pass along to our AR session. So I'm using my session object call the run function and then passing along my configuration with some options. So what I'd like to do is every time we hit view will appear, I'd like to reset my tracking and all I'd also like to remove all existing anchors that we might have if we switched from a settings screen back or whatever is possible here. But now that we run our AR face tracking configuration, we can find or work with the anchors that are found by AR kit. And we're doing that in the already mentioned session did update anchors uh, delegate function. And here, what we need to do is first of all, check if we're dealing with a face anchor. So I'm using an if let statement here to define a face anchor object. And then I'm using the list of anchors that I get here as a parameter of this function. And I'm just accessing the first element here and try to cast that to an AR face anchor. And if we have found such an AR face anchor, I'd like to call my update function that I've already prepared. And what I can do here is simply passing along my face anchor. And here in this update function, we're now actually performing our magic or actually we're reading the facial expressions or we deal with the information that we get from this face anchor. And what I'd like to do now is first of all, create a blend shapes 
object. And bland shapes object or bland shapes are the different facial expressions that we can actually read. And for that reason, I'm going to define a dictionary here, um, or I'm defining bland shapes as a dictionary with the key AR, face anchor and bland shape location. And here I'm using any as my value, and then I'm assigning face anchor dot bland shapes. And if we have a look at these bland shapes, then I'm going to just open up the uh, documentation real quickly and having a look at the bland shape location. And you will see that we get a lot of different bland shapes and different locations. For example, I have eye blink left, I have eye look down left and so on and so on. They're very detailed information about how the face moves, the mouth and jaw and so on. So a lot of information that you can use for your own projects. And we are now particularly interested in the brow inner upland shape location because this is the coefficient describing upward movement of the inner portion of both eyebrows. And this is what we're going to use to actually have a look at how our eyebrows are moving. And to do that, all we need to actually get is using a guard statement, um, creating a brow inner up object here. And if we just access now our blend shapes, then I can use the key brow inner up. And if we can cast that to a float, then we're good to go. If not, we should return because if we cannot cast that, then we cannot read the value of this coefficient. And now what I'd like to do is to perform a check if the brow inner up is greater than 0.5. And this means that we have risen our eyebrows. And what I'd like to do now is using my game scene object that I've already created as a property of this class and call update player with a state of up. And for the down state, I'm using an else if here using brow inner up is less than point. 0 to 5. And actually, these values are coming from brow interrupt. And I've just experimented a little bit um, to figure out these values. And I don't think that they're perfect. So if you have a little bit of more time, then just go ahead, um, add a print statement here. And um, have a look at brow interrupt um, and interact a little bit with the true depth camera and see when actually or when you get the results that you need or what coefficient you get for rising your eyebrow and for lowering your eyebrow. And I have just figured that these are kind of good values for our purpose. So if we have a brow interrupt value that is less than uh, 0 0.025, then I'm again using my game scene calling update player, passing along the down state. And in any other case, I'm using my game scene again, calling update player and passing along the state neutral. So here we go. And that's it. Actually, that is all we need to do to actually recognize the movement of our eyebrows. And with that, we have actually completed our game. And I'm going to run this on a real device and stream it to my machine right here. And here we are, as you can see, if I move this a little bit to the left, we get a lot of values here from the true depth camera. And if I now look at my iPhone, I can definitely move my player around. I get my nice haptic feedback, move it one down, move it up. And this is what we just did. It's so cool. I hope you enjoyed this little exploration of what is possible with the True Depth camera. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss any future tutorials. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.